this video, I'm going to show you how to modify the manifest for a M365 Copilot agent. So this video was brought to you by the Community Summit North America. I will actually be speaking at the Community Summit for North America. It's the largest Microsoft AI and Business Solutions user conference on the planet, guys. And from October 19th to the 23rd at the Gaylord Palms in Orlando, Florida, come join me and 5,500 others as we explore how AI is redefining Microsoft business applications. And you can get this scoop at summitna.com. Please come out and support me and come see me. Uh, I'll be happy to answer questions and things at this event. And I look forward to seeing you guys there. And many thanks to them for supporting videos like this to make it easier for me to keep making content for you guys. So you might be asking yourself, what is a manifest to begin with and why do we even care about this? The answer is that a manifest is the actual file that defines like the configuration and everything for Teams, for like a Teams application is where it originally came from. But this is also how the M365 Copilot knows how to connect to one of the agents you create. So whether you create that agent as an inline agent or you can connect an agent that you've already created inside of Copilot Studio by publishing it to the M365 Copilot as a channel. In both cases, what you're going to need to be able to modify is the manifest file to be able to modify the way it looks and feels on the other side inside of the M365 Copilot, as well as if you publish it to the Teams channel if you want to modify it. Say you want to change the icon or what is the actual person who created it to not just be the default name or the defaults of what came in it. How do you actually do that? Well, you can do that in the manifest file itself. And in some cases, you have tools that will do that for you inside a full Copilot Studio, but in the inline builder, it's a little trickier to be able to do it. So let's take a look at how you do it inside of Copilot Studio first, and then we'll go take a look at how you actually do that in the inline builder scenarios as well. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna start with what is the experience that we're trying to modify inside of the M365 Copilot because you may be asking yourself, I didn't really understand the whole concept of a manifest, so can you show me an example? Well, the example would be that I have two different agents down here that have been created. I've got one that's uh, been created through uh, Copilot Studio, full Copilot Studio, and you can see here that it's got a different icon, it's got different uh, components down here that have information about this. Now, these are actually not stored in the manifest down here, but what is stored is the icon, the name, uh, also who it's created by right here. You can see that this is different. Now, when you create this in the inline builder, you'll notice that you'll still be able to create like different, um, different little boxes down here that can say, here's examples or samples of things that you can query, but you'll notice that it creates it automatically with created by mod administrator or created by your name. But what if you actually wanted to change that? You don't, you don't really want a full Copilot Studio implementation, but you want to change this information and maybe you want to change it after you actually created it because you want to distribute it uh, to a larger group of people. But when I want to distribute it to a larger group of people, I need to be able to get the manifest file, but I also might want to modify it so it doesn't say created by mod administrator. It could be created by a COE or a, uh, a specific department within IT or things of that nature. How do I actually go about modifying this? And that is what is the subject of this video. So we'll start with how we would do that for the full Copilot Studio implementation, like this Porsche 911 manual option. Okay, so now that we're back inside of Copilot Studio, you're gonna see that we've got that agent for the Porsche 911 manual pulled up that you saw that was manifesting itself inside of the M365 Copilot. And that's because the way that we went about that is we created it inside of Copilot Studio, inside of the full Copilot Studio experience here. And you're gonna see that inside of this, we have a channel. And one of the channels is that we have Teams and the M365 Copilot. And when we go in and we click on this and take a look at it, what you'll see is that 
we have this checkbox where we said make it available to the M365 Copilot. Now, again, why did those things get combined? They got combined because they're basically the same uh, process in the way that they work. So the, the person who is responsible for approving applications for Teams is also the person who's approving applications for the M365 Copilot. So this is the same basic admin. And what you'll want to look at is you'll want to look at once you create this, you can go into edit details. Now, when we go in and want to edit the details, this is where I can change the color of the icon or the icon itself. You can see here that I can change things like the short description uh, that's in here and such. And the thing that a lot of people don't know is that if you click this more, you can actually go in and you can see the developer name, you can see the website, the privacy statement, terms of use, all of these additional pieces of information. Now, what are, are all of these pieces of information? Well, all of these pieces of information are the configurations for the Teams manifest file that you're going to use to be able to create the actual agent connection on the M365 Copilot or in the Teams experience itself. And so, as you're going through and you want to be able to create these, just be aware that you'll want to be able to go in and modify these. Now, once we modify something in here, uh, as an example, we can see here like where I changed the developer name and this, all of that is available for you to change directly in the UI. And once you do that and you hit save, what you can do is make those modifications, change the, the developer name or things of that nature. Matter of fact, let's just do one. For example, if I come in and let's say that I wanted to change the developer name to be, you know, this is the COE uh, and I can make it COE at copilotstudio.com and I go ahead and hit save. Once I've done that, what I'm now done is edited that manifest. Now you'll need to go back into availability options and you'll need to be, here's where you can uh, get a link, you can copy or download the zip file. Well, what is the download the zip file? That is the actual manifest file. Now we didn't make you have to download it and edit it or anything like that in some sort of uh, development tool. But what we did do is make it where there's a UI where you can change these things, but ultimately you're building this zip file. Now, the other thing is, is that once I'm done with all this, I can click on that I want to publish it. You can see here that I've already got a version 1.0.10, and then I can even submit this to the admin. And when I do that, now the admin has gotten the information that is being submitted to them to say, hey, there's an update to that manifest. And it'll show up in the Teams admin interface that there was a need to be able to do that. And you'll see here that it's been submitted and such. And so ultimately, once the admin approves it inside of the Teams admin interface, then what will happen is it will reflect those changes into Teams itself and into the M365 Copilot itself. Now, that's how we can go through the full Copilot Studio experience and modify the manifest file and be able to download the manifest file if we want to. So now let's go explore how we would do this in the inline builder that is inside of the M365 Copilot that allows you to be able to build agent experiences through it because it's different. Okay, so now we're back inside of the M365 Copilot and we're gonna take a look at how we would go about doing and modifying this property information one that we have. Now, needless to say, you would think that you would be able to come up here and maybe get to it here and you can see there's like settings and stuff, but that's really not where we're going to be able to do that. Um, it's actually kind of hidden a bit on the way to be able to do this. Now, for those that don't know what I mean by the inline builder, what I'm talking about is if you come in here and say create agent, what you're gonna see is you can come in and create one and you can do configurations and things of this nature, but you'll notice that inside of this, I don't actually have the ability to modify who it says it was created by. 
And so when I look at this, there is nowhere that I can modify some of the stuff that we were talking about before, like the created by. Uh, so you may decide that what you want to do is be able to get a hold of the manifest file directly so that that way you can modify these things. But you can also turn around and use that zip file to be able to submit that application for wider distribution within your organization to your Teams administrator or your M365 Copilot administrator. Now, the first part though is how do I actually get that manifest file? So the way that you go about it is that if you come in and you say that you wanna create an agent, you'll see here that you can click on my agents up here. A lot of people don't know that you can do that, but once you do that, you can see all the agents that you've created and you can click this little button here with the three dots and then you can download the zip file. And once you've downloaded the zip file, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over and show you what that looks like. So once you download the zip file, what you'll end up with is you'll end up with the zip file here, which is property information. Now I went ahead and said that I wanted to go ahead and extract it. And so you don't, if you need to do this, all you need to do is say extract all, you'll get the same result in a folder. And once we go into the property information here, uh, that we have, which is the ex extracted folder. Now we've got an implementation of different files inside of this manifest. Now, a little trick is you don't necessarily have to extract a file to be able to modify it, but I just wanted to show you guys what's inside of this. Now, the first thing is you're gonna see the declarative agent. And the declarative agent is gonna be the config file that I was talking about before, which is the thing that says, here are the starter prompts and here are the different configurations that need to be uh, put in. Uh, to be able to control that. But the one that I really wanna focus on for now is the manifest file. Now, if we open the manifest file, which you can see these are JSON files, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to take a look at those. So let's look at what they look like actually inside of the manifest file. So now I've opened the manifest file inside of Visual Studio Code, and now we can see a lot more information such as we can see here that it says that the name of the developer is mod administrator. So if I wanted to change this to be able to be uh, COE for Copilot, then I can do that and modify that directly within this file. And now I'm changing the actual created by uh, it text that's inside of it, as well as you'll start to see the privacy URL uh, and things of that, uh, that nature, like the terms of use URL. All of these things are available for you if you need to modify these inside of your uh, inline agent that you've created. Now, once we've got all this and we've edited it all, it's a simple zip it up and send it to your admin, but this gives you the ability to get into the inner workings of it. And let's go and take a look at one last thing. That last thing that I wanted to show you is what if we actually open that other config file, which is the declarative agent config file. What you're gonna see here is this is where you're gonna see all the information about the declarative copilot that we've built inside, or the declarative agent rather, that we've built inside of Cop Copilot Studio's uh, inline builder for the M365 Copilot. And you'll see here, that here's the conversation starters and you could go in and modify those if you'd like. And you can see a lot of other pieces of information here. Now, I will warn you that once you go in here and start modifying all of this, that you don't really wanna change a lot of this stuff directly in the JSON file. In my opinion, I would stick to only modifying the things that you can't modify within the UI itself, but this will give you the information that you need to be able to go modify it and allows you to be able to save this back, put it in your zip file, give it to your Teams administrator, and then you can go and distribute this as far as you would like. And for a lot of people, this is really important because they wanna really take advantage of the runtime and the way that RAG executes inside of the M365 Copilot, and they don't wanna take on all the complexity of a full Copilot Studio implementation. So this gives them that ability to do that and be able to scope this down. Now, a lot of people ask me about, well, how do I do change management with this? This also means that you can check this into source and you can get the source code and then version it and do things of that nature if you so desire as well. And so again, this is really how I would recommend that you take a look at 
how you can go and do these advanced configurations when you're using the inline builder. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today. And for more videos like this on Copilot Studio, please make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. And as always, you can go try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.